www.beginneducator.com and now you have gone so far you have finished these books and now it's time to go over writing a book response. So if you're ready for this lesson please only do this lesson if and only if you fulfill all this criteria. First you finish your very simple essay because this essay is going to be a little bit more challenging and it's going to require a little bit more work, which is why you do the very simple essay first so that you're ready for it. Uh, you have also followed the Finding Things to Read lesson that was shown at the beginning of this series. If you need to watch that again, I encourage you to do so. If you need a refresher, please, please, please do, because you might need it. You are going to have to find things to read now that you've already read. You've also finished proofreading the bad essay. If you remember that was one of the assignments after the proofreading one was to read the bad essay. And of course, you have finished reading either Wrinkle in Time or Brave New World. You can't write a book response on a book you haven't finished. So also we have certain required skills. First off, do you know how to summarize yet? If you haven't, go back and review the summarization lesson. That way you're comfortable with it. Also, do you know the difference between main characters and supporting characters? If you don't, you're not sure, go back and watch the book check-in on characters. Do you understand various types of conflict? If you don't, just go back and watch the conflict one again. And finally, symbolism. That's also the same story. Go back and watch the symbolism essay. So the plan for this is that you are going to follow instructions and a new series of skills in formatting and citing. This is kind of a warm up for the big research paper you're going to be writing later, but for now I'm going to give you some general tips on how to format and how to cite. Also, there are going to be a list of short answer questions regarding these two books. You'll write like two or three sentences on on answering each one, and the purpose of that isn't to be graded and it's not to get the right answer, but it's just to help you brainstorm and to get you thinking. Finally, for each one of these books, you will have three options to choose from to what you, want, you write your response on. Pick one, exactly one. Don't try to write a paragraph uh, on all three, just one. I mean, if you really want to write three essays, go ahead, but I have the feeling you only need to write one. Now, one of the most important concepts is when we're writing books on other people's work and what other people have said about a work is we have to be careful of the P word. I'm going to show you what the P word is in a minute, but let's use our imagination for a second. Imagine you spend an entire weekend writing a very good paper, like the best paper you ever read, and you give it to a friend, and your friend is writing a paper on the same subject. They think that one of your paragraphs is so good that they copy it down onto their paper and they turn it in. The teacher gives that student an A because they think that that essay is great. But who really earned that grade? And who got credit instead? This is the P word. This is called plagiarism. Your friend might have meant well. Your friend might not have done it on purpose, but he still plagiarized something you wrote and he took credit for it. Now imagine how bad that would make you feel. Don't do it. Don't plagiarize. Don't copy somebody else's work. Wait, don't copy somebody else's work? Well, it turns out there are times when you can.